Hello guys and welcome to what is uh, a primer on uh, Run Advance's uh, latest offering which is the vision software. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, right now without uh, talking too much about it is tell you what it does. Uh, so let me begin by telling you uh, what I'm doing. This is a session I played today uh, and these are some of the hands I marked and I marked them for several reasons. Now let's take up the first one. We have a shorter stack player um, on the button, uh, Mr. Sahib, and uh, he he raises uh, pre flop. And I wasn't sure what to do with this hand because I did not want Sahil to see bet into me with uh, the deeper player behind me. So what I'm going to do is uh, open the software and see what the software tells me. So we go to practice, we go to the custom beta, which is uh, where you find out your preflop stuff. Uh, because uh, Vision currently offers the solutions only 50 and 100 big blinds, what I'm gonna do is simplify this to the effective uh, uh, stack size. Uh, and the closest we can get here is uh, to his 32 big, back, uh, big blind stack is 50. And so I'm going to ask uh, Vision what I do in the small blind versus a button open. Give it a few seconds to load. And uh, we will see what happens with uh, all combinations of our current time when it's uh, single suited, when it's double suited, when it's suited to the ace, when it's uh, triple suited. And uh, what uh, you can do is you can tinker with uh, any or, or all of the four cards and see how that changes uh, depending on the size of the pair you have or your side cards or your suits. Uh, what I really like about Run It Once is that they give you a mandatory quiz before uh, they start off. So in this uh, particular case, uh, because the fives and the threes are connected, and it's not double suited, so I'm going to go with a call, which uh, is, is wrong. Well, you learn something new every day. Turns out when you are double suited, it's call about half the time and it three bets the rest of the time. All right, we learned something nice today. Our hand was uh, ace, jack, nine, nine. And we see that uh, this hand, when it's uh, double suited, is always raising. When it's uh, suited to the ace, it's it's uh, sometimes uh, raising, uh, sometimes calling, and uh, sometimes uh, folding as well. Um, so these are obviously um, you can interpret this as as frequencies, or you can also go down here. And see that ace jack nine nine when the nines are not involved in the suits um, are mostly folds and sometimes calls, but the hands that are raising most are the ones that have the nine involved in the suit. All right, that's uh, something uh, noteworthy. So if you flop a nine. There is a possibility that you can have two hearts as well on the board. So let's say let's go with this combination of uh, Ace Jack 99, nine, the one where my uh, cursor is. So with this combination, I assume it's uh, easier, uh, quote unquote, to flop. Uh, I mean, it's, you can actually flop uh, a set and a flush draw with this, but I'm guessing you can't do that with with this hand because when you flop a nine uh and you still have two clubs oh probably actually you know what i may have that uh, uh wrong when you have uh, the nine that's involved you can flop a set uh, and that leaves you two cards. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why this happens. 
my assumption is we would want to play this hand more than we would uh, uh, this hand. So we're going to keep this uh, uh, still as, as a marked uh, hand because I haven't truly understood uh, what the implication of this is. So let's keep this for now. My understanding would have been that this is more of a, a three bet or a call and less of a fold. However, this is more of a fold. So I, I really want to find out why that is. So we're going to keep that on hold for a while and move on to the next hand, which is uh, this one. And against an under the gun open, while I did call his open, I mean, now this guy is uh, middle position. Because of one player that's less, he gets to play a wider range. And he should consider himself in middle position and not under the gun. So what we can do is uh, head over to the tab where it tells us uh, what the button is doing versus uh, middle position. Um, so full call or free bet, we go to button versus MP, which is right here. And we move that to 100 BB and we wait for it to load. Uh, bef and by the time it's it's uh, done loading, let's figure out what our game plan should have been. Uh, my assumption is this is when it's double suited, I am going to assume I am going to three bet this hand a lot. But I think with the king higher suit, this hand uh, is is mostly just a call. And with a jack or a ten high suit or rainbow or triple suit, this is going to be a fold versus uh, MP open. All right, we surprisingly have a similar uh, hand here. Uh, but this hand uh, has uh, a gap in the middle, whereas our hand had a gap uh, uh, up top and one in the bottom. So our hand is significantly weaker than this one. So here with the queen 10, I am going to call. Looks like we are correct. And uh, rainbow ones are folding and triple suits are calling and single suits are calling, which means that even a 10 high suit is supposed to be calling this. Let's just find that out. Uh, here we are, the 10 high suit is calling as well. So when we plug in our hand, which is the king, jack, 10, 8, let's see what the results are. See, obviously, uh, as we were discussing, a hand uh, with, with two gaps, and especially uh, one at the top, is significantly weaker. So as we see, the fold percentage went up to 42%. And it seems like uh, the double suited ones are, are raising always, which means that our assumption was correct. Uh, the rainbow ones are folded, which we had uh, predicted. Uh, the triple suited ones are mostly folds, but I think the small minority which does call is going to be uh, suits like king, 10, 9. So only the king high suit and uh, the queen not being in there because it's the best combination we can have. Because what this essentially does is uh, it allows our opponents to have uh, bigger flushes. So that when we flush over flush someone, or uh, they get to call uh, perhaps uh, a little wider than they would if they had flopped like a 10 high flush or an 8 high flush with uh, the queen being out there. However, you can simplify this to being a fold uh, every single time it's triple suited. So let's see if our assumption was correct. And uh, all right, this one's correct. This one's correct. Yeah, seems like uh, seems like our predictions were, were spot on. That's uh, that's really nice to know. Uh, and of course, the single suited ones are mostly calls. So my assumption is, uh, I had said that only the king high suit would be a call, but it seems like the king and the queen high suits are calls. Looking at this graph, okay, and let's go down. Uh, we can see the jack high suit being folded 50-50. Uh, oh, all right. 
So this is more of a frequency play than a combination play. But if you want, you can certainly uh, simplify this to mean that uh, uh, the king or the Jayakai suits will be calls and the rest will be poles. I think that can be a decent takeaway without going uh, into extreme detail about which combinations will be played what percentage of the time because I, I don't think that's humanly possible. All right, let's go to hand number three. Um, so I've uh, when I was playing, uh, I have marked uh, hands uh, in various categories. Sometimes I have um, uh, questions about hands which are in single raised pots, uh, sometimes in, sometimes out of position, sometimes in limped pots, sometimes uh, the questions are pre-flop. So uh, there's just a lot going on. And uh, the software right now can answer a lot of our questions, but it's not possible to recreate every single situation exactly the same. So, okay, seems like it's a limped pot. All right, I remember this hand. And uh, our, our relatively tight opponent, uh, I mean, sure, his V pip is uh, on the higher side. His pre flop and three bed, I mean, the Okay, so the three bed might be a little higher, but I think it's it's okay. Minus is, is nine, and I I three bed, uh, or I'm trying to incorporate the the GTO ranges. So I assume he's not going absolutely crazy with that, like king king deuce nine or six. So uh, when this guy uh, leads, my assumption is uh, he has uh, a pretty strong range actually. And uh, our options are between calling and uh, three betting or, or raising actually. So um, with no back doors, uh, I want to see whether this is more of a call or more of a raise. I elected to, to, to raise because I did not want to see the turn. But let's find out what uh, the actual GTO solution is. So we go to boards. Okay, so we will learn um, his stack size is approximately, let's call that 50 BB. So let this be a single race spot where uh, we are in uh, position. Uh, he had called uh, from uh, the small blind. So my assumption is uh, his range is similar to the one that opens from the small blind. So in that it's not uh, absolutely uh, wide. A uh, preflop aggressor, uh, so he doesn't really have uh, the the initiative. So I am going to let him be. Uh, let's see. I am going to let him be. You know what, I, I will want to be uh, in, in position as the investor. It's, uh, it's rainbow and the board is jack. Second jack six four. So we look at the unpaired boards and we look at jack and we find. Uh, we don't find a jack six four, but the closest one we find is jack five three and that is totally fine. Uh, let this be a blind versus blind situation. Although he had simply, so I think this, this position is fine as well. Uh, the reason for that is, I mean, all of our ranges are just very wide. All right. So he decides to lead. So in the button, he has a wide range on the, in, in the blind, on the big blind, I have a wide range as well. And he decides to lead. Now, uh, in, uh, when you work with Monka Solver, you can set that to exactly full pot. But uh, like I said, uh, when you, uh, when we're working with the software, we'll have to make some adjustments. And uh, truth be told, uh, these adjustments are not, uh, uh, they don't deviate as much uh, 
uh, from our situations as we think. Uh, the thing is, we're trying to learn about spots. And uh, while it's true that we won't have the exact same solution for uh, the spot we played, but we will get a very good general idea. Now, when we give ourselves uh, the actual hand, so let's say, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the 10, 7, 3, 5, It says we should never have this hand in uh, range, all right? What if we have four, six? Oh, all right, we have to adjust for the board. Silly me, boys. Uh, four, six, seven, let's give this a nine. It says uh, that we call all the time and we do not raise at all. All right, that's... Uh, particularly interesting uh, even if we have uh, two back doors that's uh, nice to know what if uh, we have a hand that's a little weak and does not want to see turns let's say jack free 10 10 well, this hand is obviously for obvious reasons less of a call and more of a raise and obviously when we raise and get re raised all of these hands will be folded as expected, so that's fine. And in practice, uh, this raise doesn't have to be a pot. If you're going for a bed fold, it can be a little smaller. What if when you have a hand like Jack, three, five, nine, or Jack, three, five, four. Sorry, oh. all right, does make sense that you won't have this. What about ace jack b5? Turns out we don't want to see. Uh... Oh, all right, all right, my bad. Sorry, guys, I'm I'm new to this as well. Um, yeah, so it seems like it's mostly uh. A raise, and my assumption is uh, with two back doors, we are never going to fold any shops. Yeah, this is a call 100% of the time, right? Makes uh, makes sense. All right, all right. So we can go back. And uh, understand that with even with uh, backdoor flush draws, this is a call. And without backdoor flush draws, we shouldn't have this hand. But I think I'm still a little concerned about the fact that uh, I'm not sure whether uh, having backdoor flush draws makes it uh, more likely for us to raise or less likely for us to raise. So let's give this. A combination like 4, 6, 10, 10. All right. What about 4, 6, um, 8, 8? So it seems like uh, when we go back to the button, 4, 6, 8, 8 is, is always a call. All right. What about 4, 6? And it's always a call. Uh, what about four, six, seven, eight? Always a call. Four, six, seven, nine. Always a call. Uh, what if you remove the wraps? Uh, four, six, eight, nine. You should never have this. Four, six, use, use. Four, six, uh, king, queen. It seems like it's it's always a call, and uh, no open enders and no wraps are raised in this board. All right, that's the general idea. We'll we'll have to look. Uh, uh, I think uh, at some other hand whether having backdoor flushes or backdoor flush draws makes it more likely or less likely. 
and again uh, he is spotting so he is showing a lot of strength so maybe his uh, six fours and, and jack fours are in there which are bed folding but other than that uh, when when i do decide to raise he will uh, get it in with pretty pretty strong uh, equity and we'll more often than not we will be winning all right, so that's the analysis. It turns out uh, this is not a race, and I think I agree with it. Uh, this one is solved as well. All right. So I was wondering whether this is a call. I, I think it certainly is, especially given the sizing. We can't adjust uh, the sizing right now, so we will have to check for uh, uh, pot sized uh, rays from uh, middle position. Uh, we are effectively, let's call this 100 dpt, and let's make this guy 100 dpt as well. So we are in the squeeze spot when we are in the button and uh, it's versus uh, middle position and uh, that's about right uh, this guy open the position and this guy is the button all right makes sense i looked into a similar spot yesterday and i think this is uh, always a defend given how five six is connected Although one of the uh, things I was concerned about was uh, uh, what's more important. I think we go back to the first hand uh, this way. Uh, when we check what's more important, if if the hand is ace five six six, is it better to have ace five of spades and six six uh, without a spade, or is it better to have the ace six of spades and um, five six of of different uh, suits? So, all right, so let's just check that out. I'm going to assume this is a defend uh, hundred. Oh, all right, it's it's a fold. All right, single suited. I think. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. So uh, with any suit, uh, this is a defend. Uh, of course, any A size suit and even A triple suits are called. So, all right, makes uh, makes sense. Okay, and that was a rather easy doubt uh, to to clear. Uh, we move on to 987. And I uh, ended up folding this hand. Uh, I I used to open these hands a lot in uh, early and middle positions, but I think you have to be at the cutoff to go uh, crazy with this hand. Uh, so I'm going to look this up. My assumption is double suited. This is an open. And nine high suited. Uh, suited to the eight is of the four right so we go to uh, middle position rf5 of course means a uh, raise first in which means that you are opening an unopened uh, pot middle position let's just confirm that early position middle position that is correct and 987 is the hand takes a little while to open uh, this will certainly be all. I really like uh, these uh, quizzes. Oh wow, that's. I'm not sure about which hand this guy is talking about, but okay. I think they they switched uh, hands uh, in between when we were answering. All right, um, nine eight eight seven. All right, uh, this is a fold when triple suited when rainbow. When single suited, I think this means uh, suited to the nine. Yeah, I don't mind uh, simplifying this to mean suited to the nine. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. And uh, when double suited, it's, it's always a raise. All right. What about a hand like uh, 10, 9, 8, 8? I think. It's, it's opened obviously a whole lot more, uh, but I think uh, all, all the single suited ones will be open. That's my assumption. All right, so looks like uh, our assumption is correct. Triple suits are fold. 
uh, double sorts are always open and single sorts are open as well. What about 9988? Are ones being opened? Uh, I think yes, 100% open. All right, makes uh, sense. Makes sense. So let's get that out. And let's move on to the next one where we open and face a 3-bet someone who's a relatively tight 3-better uh, and let's uh, analyze both the spots so what we'll do is uh, once we'll analyze the hand playing as the button and uh, the next time we will analyze the hand playing as the big line ace, queen, queen, 4 is the hand question right so versus 3 bet right so we are in the button and we face a squeeze from the big blind notice that the big blind has a wider range than the small blind the small blind uh, 3 bets a, a lot more hands for quote unquote uh, deception and for getting heads up for knocking out the big blind uh, getting that extra dead money in the middle right so this is for sure a call yeah Single suits are called as calls as well when it's ace high. So with the ace, queen, queen, and before I type in the four, I'm just gonna guess what happens when I face this three bet. And uh, we are also about uh, 76 blinds deep, so which is effectively about 100, which means that it's, it's completely fine. So, ace, queen, queen, four. My assumption is uh, the rainbow ones will be folded actually. Um, ace, king, king, and ace, queen, queen, they're not all that different to be honest. I mean, sure, ace, king, king is, is a much stronger hand. But, uh, so my assumption is I'm going to be calling 100% because the 4 is connected to the ace. So it seems like there is some connectivity. So my assumption is call 100% of the time. Alright, so it's a 95% call and when it's double suited, you can go ahead and uh, pre bet this. And this, of course, is purely a frequency uh, three bet because I mean, ace, queen, and queen four. I mean, the suits are exactly the same. You can't have uh, two good suits here. I mean, both your suits will be good. So, yeah, that's an equal uh, division. Huh. But uh, in in all. Uh, practicality you can simplify this to mean uh, that when it's uh, double suited you'll still end up calling if, if you want to simplify it to that i think that's absolutely fine although it's good to know that this hand is three but as well uh so when i make this a seven i think it's going to be a three bet uh, more often because uh, we will flop less I mean, we will flop uh, a smaller piece of the board with the seven being disconnected. So my assumption is uh, uh, the single suited ones will call. The double suited ones will shuffle between calling and three betting. And uh, the queen high suits will be fold, folded. So it seems like uh, my assumption was not really correct so the triple suits are calls double suits are always calls and the ace with the queen seven is sort of turned into a quote unquote bluff all right all right and this is again a common uh, thing in uh, in solver in the solver world where it takes uh, some combinations that don't flop as well and turns them into quote unquote bluffs so that it can reduce the SPR and start shoving flops. 
and uh, I assume when this guy parts, he is not holding. Let's let's get to the format. Uh, this is the big blind versus. Uh, what is this? The big blind versus the. Uh, okay, our hand is in there. But my assumption is when you once you uh, forbid. Uh, it's kind of difficult to go ahead and hold this hand once you forbid. But uh, if we go to um, this one, seems like it's the closest one we have. Uh, sounds obviously showing, but oh, all right. I think the situation we have to look at is uh, versus versus ah uh, versus. So we open this guy three bits. We four bet, and I. Yeah, I think that's uh, versus five. Right? I I don't think we have that right now. But my assumption is uh, once we four bet to seventy one, we all right. We can do the maths on this one. All right. So once we have four bet, all right. Let's go to let's check out this scenario. Once we have four bet to seventy one. And this guy shoves. So there is 200 plus 2 plus 71 in the middle. And we have to call 129 to win that. So you are 129. That's 402. And 129 by 402 will give us uh, the minimum percentage we, we need. All right, so let's uh, open up a tool called uh, Odds Oracle for Poker Tools. And uh, let's work with that. So uh, once uh, we get 4 bet, right. so the Ace of Spades, Queen of Spades. Uh, Queen of Hearts and Seven of Hearts. And let's this guy, give this guy a squeezing range of, or should I say, a four betting range of purely ace ace. So we can see we have about 32%, which means that we're getting very close to the break even spot. And if we uh, choose our uh, quote unquote bluffing candidate, which means uh, our queen will be offsuit. So let's make this. Uh, so spades, hearts, and diamonds. So once our percentage uh, drops, and this drops uh, significantly to about uh, less than 28%, I think. I think this is not enough to get it in. All right, boys, there we have it. We solved a <laughs> GTO problem. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get back to the next uh, example. We will remove this from here. And, uh, Let's just uh, recap uh, once more because it seems like it's a fairly important spot. Uh, versus three bit from the button when we are playing against the big blind. Uh, this hand is most certainly. Ace, Queen, Queen, Four. So we are never folding. 
that seems to be the theme. Uh, once we change our hand to Ace Jack Jack for uh, uh, this one begins uh, to, to fold. And Ace King King, as you guys will be surprised when I type in the four, is never ever, even when it's double suited, never ever uh, a four bet. I, I was uh, pretty surprised when I saw this, but I've been working with the solver for a while and uh, I've known this for a while. Uh, if, of course, you change the situation to 50 big blinds, I think uh, this will change. But uh, at 100 BB or deeper, uh, that will not be... Uh, my assumption is this is a fold because of the suit. Right. So the Ace King King 4 here will now be format. You you see guys how uh, stack sizes uh, affect our play. It's like uh, when you 4 bet here, uh, when you get 3 bet here, you never want to fold uh, this this hand. Uh, because it is a it is pushing a lot of equity against uh, non ace hands. And it's, it's one of those situations where you run into a combination of aces and some uh, ace high rundowns. Uh, the rundowns you're crushing, I mean, against aces, you're not doing very well, but I mean, my assumption is you will have similar equity to uh, uh, the calculation we did in Pro Poker Tools. So with about 30-32% equity uh, in a smaller uh, stack size situation, uh, the, the stack off is, is more comfortable, is, is the essence of uh, 50 BP play in this spot. Alright, uh, let's go back to our replayer and see if uh, we can find something more interesting. Um, So you can't really uh, see the spot. All right. So let's say you open with eight eight five five single suitor, and you get three bet from the big blind. My assumption is even with. Uh, so let's just look at stack sizes. Yeah, my assumption is. I mean, while I've marked it, my assumption is this will always be a fall. Button versus blind. All right, I think that's versus three bet. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, the one that's mentioned first is the one that's facing the action. Um, let's see. Hold. All right, relax. Uh, Jack 10, 8, 6. I'm not sure what this is doing. But I, it seems like the call button is missing here. Alright. Alright. I think uh, there's some problem with uh, how, the, how Vision is moving. It's all right. It's it's a new software. They're working on it. Uh, with our actual hand, which was eight 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 five, I think this is going to be. Huh. Eight eight five five should never be in this spot. That is extremely strange. So I am going to refresh this. Button versus big uh, blind and eight eight. 5-5 five, five should always be in that spot. I, I'm not sure what uh, this guy means. What about 8, eight five, 6? That's very strange. Because the button is always opening 8855. Eight, five. I think that may be a problem with uh, uh, the warning we just got that our combination can't be there. I think uh, this one's going to be an open for me. 
and 8855 is going to be an open 100% of the time. So we were correct. Let's go back and go for the button versus uh, big line and let this thing uh, reload and see if, uh, if it can give us uh, some uh, optimal uh, solutions this time. All right. Uh, this is going to be a fold. It's too disconnected. It's not double suited. So, well, the correct answer is cool. Wow. All right. Uh, okay. Five. And it's going to be a call 100%. What about 8899? What about 88 Jack Jack? What about 88 King King? Will it ever raise? It never raises. What about Ace King 88? Well, this is a fold some of the time. All right. The rainbow ones are folded. What about um, King King Queen Queen? This is never raised as well. Wow, that's uh, very surprising. What about the worst aces? I think these are better candidates to. To raise more often and better, better aces. All right, so it seems like the worst aces are sometimes called. Although that seems very counterintuitive, but of course the solver does uh, does throw up uh, some surprises from time to time. You can actually simplify this to say this will be a a uh, bit all the time. What about any time you have free aces? It's always a raise. You don't want to see flops. Or if you see flops, you want the SPR to be very low. What about ace ace king deuce? Always. What about ace ace five six? Huh. Ace ace five six. Well, it seems like ace is 8-9 would also be in the same category. And that's a raise. That is actually very surprising. My assumption is all uh, these combinations will be 3 bets and 4 bets uh, out of position. So if I go to uh, versus 4 bet. Uh, versus 3 bet when you're out of position. So let's say you squeeze your 3 bet from uh, the small blind and the button and any of the person in position 4 bets. So when you are in the big blind or when you're in the small blind. And you face four bet. I think uh, those bad aces are always, always getting them. Uh, because out of position, you want to not see flops. Even if the SPR is low, you just want to shove the money in pre. And if he folds, that's like great news. That's free money. And if he if he calls your your raise, you are way ahead. Unless of course he shows up with. Uh, double suited uh, connected aces in which case you start uh, praying all right so this hand will always be a problem in my opinion and if you have ace is um, five six yeah it's it's always a raise all right makes sense makes sense um now we can get this out of the way and i think let's head over to one of the flop uh, simulations uh this one's a small blind versus big blind and i opened uh, queen 10 8 9 all right so the good thing about uh, vision is that you can open multiple instances. So I'm going to open a new one here. We will run the pre-flop uh, sim here and uh, post-flop sim somewhere else. Um, so when we open from the small blind, I want to know whether uh, 
king sorry sorry queen 1098 single suitor to the the queen is is an open or not uh my assumption is double suited this is always an open queen high suits still an open and uh rainbow i think it could be a limb or a fold so this is going to be a raise so it's correct and when we type in queen 10 9 8 so a uh, call here means uh, we limp and uh, the red one of course means uh, race so seems like double suited ones are always raising uh the rainbow ones are always limping so seems like you do want to play this hand triple suits are raising and single suits are mostly raising as well all right makes uh, makes sense uh, this graph uh, down here is the range graph, which means uh, what we do uh, with with all our hands. So it seems like uh, we we limp a fair bit, uh, twenty two percent, and we raise about twenty seven. So you're folding almost half half the hands. So you guys want to might want to go into your hold'em managers and check out if at least your frequencies are, are close to this, because if if you're folding maybe like. 20% of hands and raising the other 80. Maybe you're, you're sort of overdoing it and maybe you want to tone down. And if you're folding 90% of hands and opening only aces or ace king kings or perfect rundowns and maybe, maybe there's still a lot of money to be made by, uh, by raising only thing. All right. Now for the post flop sim. Uh, we are, uh, let's call this effectively 100 BB, although it's a little deeper than that. I'm about uh, 105, 106 BB. But I think 101, uh, 100 sim would do absolutely fine. This is a single race pod. The pre flop aggressor, which is the PFA, is out of position. That's also correct. It is single suited, the board. That's also correct. And it's a paired jack high board. It's jack. Jack six jack with two hearts. All right, we found uh, the exact board, which is always nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, we will shortly uh, switch between positions. All right. So our hand is basically wrapped around the jack. And that would be a significant reason for us to start betting. Because we can turn a lot of equity. So it shows here that we are on this board, we are checking about two thirds of the time. And when we're betting, we're betting half a pot. All right, makes uh, sense. You don't want to be potting these, these boards uh, when you're playing your range. What about when we have queen, 10, 8, 9? So with hearts, we are mostly checking. Although we are betting some percentage of the time. When we have backdoors as well, it seems like we are checking more often. Uh, solver logic uh, dictates that uh, uh, when you have hearts, it's less likely for the opponent to, to have hearts. So while you could take it down, but you could be three bet a lot as well. So instead the hands he chooses to see bet are the ones with one heart. All right. Which means that these hands are pure bed folds. All right. Uh, the ones with triple suits, I think, are bet as bluffs. And the ones uh, with 
the actual uh, flush I'm not sure what B is maybe it means big well that's not true so it seems like when we have the queen high flush draw it's more of a bet And when we have the lower flush draws, it's more of a check call. All right, I can, can understand. All right, all right. Uh, let's go back. When we have uh, pure back doors, I think it makes a lot of sense to barrel. I, I totally get why this is, in, in general, uh, a bigger C bet. I understand. Uh, this hand is a seabed for the same reasons I totally do. Yeah, so I think uh, the general takeaway we can uh, make from this is uh, let's start with the first category. It is that uh, uh, rainbow ones have practically no equity, and being out of position, you don't really want to bet uh, and, and then fold. You do want to see uh, turns. Uh, when you have uh, both the front door and the back door flush draws, it's mostly a check uh, because you do want to see uh, turns which can bring you additional equity like straight draws. Uh, you can turn so many uh, on on the nine. You can turn a pair and a big wrap on a ten. You can turn a blocker to the board. So it's it's really a, a combination of a number of things working together. Uh, when you have just the flush draw and of course all the back doors, uh, not the flushes, uh, the back doors, straight draws, you are mostly check checking, all right, can understand. But once you have uh, stuff that you can barrel on, uh, then it chooses the, the spades, which is understandable. And when we have a single heart, this is a quote unquote bluff, uh, bluffing candidate which we will use, uh, and my assumption is uh, the bigger hearts are used here. Uh, yeah, it's never the nine or the eight. It's always the 10 or the queen. And the bigger hearts are used uh, so that you can uh, bluff on, let's say, the deuce of hearts. All right, boys, hope that uh, made sense. So anyway, we, we decided to uh, to lead and uh, which of course is, is incorrect as we just saw alright my, my bad my bad so uh, there we, we have it we have the backdoor clubs which means that we can barrel a number of turns especially if the turn is the 10 of clubs I mean we can go crazy on that turn so we we lead it seems like uh, we we played uh, gto and this guy with his rather poor jack the jack 7 8 deuce decided to call and it seems like for the most part he is only calling he is not raising at all what about uh, when he has a value jack like say the ace jack all right this is raising makes uh, sense i think what uh, solver does is that it takes uh, the, uh, the top of your your non full house range and uh, converts it into a bluff catcher so when you have uh, two hearts or the ace of hearts or the ace of three uh, ace of hearts and two other hearts this now becomes uh, an out of the world bluff catcher you're blocking not flush you have trips so you can go on and call down any turn and any river of course when you hit your ace you can obviously value it but you get the general idea when you have just one heart i think this is leaning towards uh, a raising although calling would be fine as well uh, and when you have back doors, it's using that to uh, to get some value out. All right, makes makes kind of sense. Although this again is 
is mostly a mixed strategy. So I think calling or using here yeah, both both would be fine. But the important thing is when you have the Ace of Hearts or the the Ace I flush along with your Jack or uh, three uh, Hearts, which includes the Ace. Uh, along with uh, your your jack, and I assume this also includes uh, uh, any other flush draw. Uh, it's not listed here because you wouldn't be playing this uh, in in this uh, blind versus blind spot. But you can assume any other flush draw would mean just calling because now you have an excellent bluff catch up. All right, so this guy calls with his hand, which again is is GTO, and the turn is. I remember the sign. It was a ten. The Ten of Hearts. Now on the Ten of Hearts, I actually gave up because I had uh, no hearts at all. And I wouldn't want to start bluffing. I mean, sure, it puts a lot of pressure on his actual holding. But on the 10, I mean, it's kind of uh, difficult to start putting pressure on the flush portions of his range. And given the fact that we don't have uh, any heart. So with the queen, 10, 9, 8. Uh, I don't know why it's saying that. I think the spot is still loading. Let's give it a minute. And I decided to check and give up, which I th think the solver will agree with. And he checked uh, back. I think his play is fine as well. He doesn't want to start bluffing the the hearts portion of my range. Uh, having only a jack, I think that would be too risky. And here I, I check, hoping to win against uh, uh, maybe a pair of queens. A, a, uh, if if he bets, we certainly fold him because uh, he he could have flushes, he could have boats, he could have uh, overs full with like uh, the the king or even uh, king jack. Although that technically is is an underfull, but uh, if he was to bet, I would certainly give up on pretty much any any reasonable size. Uh, I check and he thankfully checks back, and we need to drag down the pot. Which I think is is totally totally fine. All right. So while uh, this is loading, I think uh, this will be it for part one. When we come back, we will look at the spot and start our analysis again.